Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. I hope you guys are having a great day. So in this video, I want to kind of build upon the video that Tech Rally published where he basically created a custom use fetch hook um, and he kind of talked about how he did it. And I wanted to kind of use the same API, so the Pokemon API, and try to do my own, but also add in pagination. So I'm not going to type out code for you all. I'm just going to kind of walk you through what I got. Uh, I definitely recommend you go check out his channel and click that subscribe button because he has some good content. But what I'm going to be showing you here is how you could potentially use a custom hook to build out some pagination um, requests. Okay, so here we have a page that shows the first re five results of what comes back from a Pokemon API. So if I were to click on next page here, it's going to increment an internal state variable to two and basically do a request to a URL. Let's see if I can expand this a little bit for you all. Okay, it's not moving over for some reason, but if you notice here, it's making a request to the Pokey API where limit is set to five and offset is set to five. If I do it again, offset becomes 10. I do it again, it becomes 15, etc. And I can kind of go back to the first page and it will disable this button. The question is, is how did I actually build this out using a custom hook? So let's just go ahead and look at the JSX to kind of understand how this component was like built out. So we have some buttons, a previous page and next page button. And basically when you click them, it's going to call some internal functions that are returned from our custom hook. Okay, I'm going to talk about these in a second, but they're pretty straightforward. And to disable this previous button, we basically check if the page is equal to zero. Again, page is an internal state variable that's returned from the custom hook. And then also loading is returned from the custom hook as well. So when it's doing the fetch request in the browser, notice here if I go over and change this to like slow 3G, it disables both the buttons and it switches to a loading section, I guess. That loading component is displayed here. So if loading, then show loading. Otherwise, we have the data and we can just display that results list here. So we see here we have like Charizard and what other, what other other Pokemon there might be. So that's really all there is to the JSX. But the meat and potatoes of what I wanted to show you in this quick video is the custom hook. Okay, so there is a hook I created called Use Pagination Fetch. And you basically need to pass it one argument. And that argument is a callback function that knows how to generate the URL that you want to fetch from. Okay. So you pass it a function and whenever it tries to fetch data from the back end, it's going to pass you a page and a page size. So it's kind of up to you to modify this URL. If you're using like a different API instead of the pokey API, maybe you're doing like your own API with pagination, then you might not be using like a limit or offset here. You want to make this kind of abstracted away so that you have the ability to customize this as you want. But ultimately all this does is return this URL that you see down here. And internally the hook is going to use that URL to fetch back the data. So let's actually look at the fun part. So the use pagination fetch hook is really just setting up a couple of state variables. Like it sets up the current page that you're looking at. So page zero would be the first page that has like, um, what Pokemon were those? Bulbazar, Ivysaur, stuff like that. And then we have a loading state, which is going to basically be used to show the loading div and also disable the buttons. And then we have a, an array of results, okay? So whenever the data comes back, we put those into a results state and the component down here can use those to kind of loop over them. So the fun part of this is the use effect hook here. So basically whenever the page is changed or the URL happens to change, then it's going to rerun this code, which is gonna set the loading to true. It's going to do a fetch request, you know, just using the typical DOM or the JavaScript browser fetch method. Using that URL, remember that method we created down here? Well, it's actually going to call that method to generate the URL. We get a response back and we set those results inside of our result state. And then we also set loading to false. So this is a pretty straightforward like fetch request and we just set some loading stuff. So I don't think there's too much to explain here. But whenever you click on the next page button or the previous page button, that's where things get a little bit interesting. So for example, if I click next page, all it's doing is incrementing page by one. And when you do that, this use effect hook is going to refire off and do another fetch request to that new URL here. Um, also, we have previous page, which I'm just kind of truncating it at zero, so you can't go into the negative pages. I probably should do the same thing for the next page, but it's not that big of a deal. So that when you try to click on previous page, it decrements the page by one, and then this effect would fire off because the page state has changed and then it's gonna hit the URL and get the data back. And then at the end of this hook, we basically just return an object that has all these internal state 
variables passed back with a couple of helper functions that the um, the caller function can use as you know when they want to increment or go back pages. So there's not too much logic going on here, but I think it was good to kind of show you all how you can kind of add pagination to a hook if you're interested in learning more about custom hooks and stuff. So I hope this helped you all. If you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. Also leave me a comment below if you use, have used custom hooks in the past for uh, who knows what. I'm kind of interested in the here, like what you might have used the custom hook for. And like always, if you're new to this channel, please sure to click that subscribe button and the bell icon because I'm going to be publishing videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better React developer and a web developer in general. All right, happy coding and have a good day.